Welcome back to the MMA Plug, powered by DenverSportsBetting.com on Mile High Sports Radio 98.1 FM and streaming live on MileHighSports.com. This Saturday, the UFC returns to the Apex in Las Vegas for another fight night and the return of one of the most prolific welterweights in the promotion's history, a fan favorite for his relentless and brutal fighting style, a 16-year veteran in the sport, true pioneer, I'm thrilled to welcome in the immortal Matt Brown into the MMA plug. Matt, it's Ron Cruck and Jordan Kurtz with you. Thank you for the time, my man. Man, what an introduction that was. All right. I like it. <laughs> yeah, not my first rodeo, but, uh, you know, 16 years, I think you deserve at least that, buddy. Uh, I appreciate it, man. Just working to do the best I can all the time. And uh, I think I got a lot left in me. That I love it. You know... You've always been a guy, Matt, that has basically lived in the gym and, and, and seems like you've always loved that grind of a training camp. As you prepare for your 43rd professional fight, and, and I'm sure there are a few more bouts that could be thrown in there, but do you prepare any differently than you did back in the good old days? Uh, and do you still have that same passion before a fight? Yeah, I think I definitely still have the same passion, but I definitely prepare a lot differently too. I'm a lot more intelligent now. Uh, before when I used to train for fights, it was really, I just went into war every single day in the gym. Every day was a vendetta. And I was in there just to try to smash anybody I could. And um, I it had a hard time keeping training partners, obviously, right. um, you know, had kind of had this reputation. I was like, Hey, Matt never goes easy. That kind of guy. Um, now. Yeah. I try to work my skills a lot more and try to be a little more um, intentional with my training. Mm. have a, have a clear idea of what I want to do. Um, you know, I actually, uh, you know, write down what I want to do for the day. And then at the end of the day, I'll go back and, 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 and look through it and analyze and see, you know, if I, the type of progression that I made. And, um, so just a lot more calculated and, and, and a lot more thoughtful with everything. Interesting. So Matt, to, to pair along with that, you know, how, how would you say that, you know, if, if you were to offer now knowing what you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of young kids coming up in the game. Now you're seeing a lot of guys that are getting signed in their young twenties. What now that you're at your stage in your career, what would you possibly offer to them as a, as a word of advice going forward with their career? Yeah, this is one of those questions I get asked a lot, actually. And it was really dependent on the person everybody would require a different answer for that. So first I'd have to get to know them to see what I would tell them. But I think in general, the most common thing I would say to everyone is to treat it like a business, like, like how I'm talking about, like writing down your intentions, writing down a strategy, writing, you know, having like basically having a business plan and, and having a business model and a strategy and, how you're going to go about uh, achieving all these goals like everything that we do and in, in fighting is it's the same as business and and everything right is a you know you have a, a goal then you you create a strategy to get to that goal and then you execute it and then you rinse and repeat and and i think that's something lost um, among a lot of people i mean if, if you were say in the corporate world and you had a, a a meeting with your boss the next day right? You would have a plan, right? You would write down what you want to talk about and what you want to go over. You would build a spreadsheet or a PowerPoint or, or what have you. And, um, but most, very, very much most, like almost every fighter kind of goes into the gym blind every day and, mm. and just trains. And a lot of them look at it as a workout rather than as a practice. And, and that's what it's all, that's how you get 1% better every day. Yeah, great insight from uh, from a true pro, Matt. We appreciate that. You know, you've had over 40 professional bouts on your record, and it all began with your MMA debut back in uh, 2005. A as you look back, man, and did you ever imagine you would have had a 16-year fight career and still be going strong? Well, first, my MMA debut was actually in, like, 2001. That was just no commissions and <laughs> or, or or whatever maybe there was a commission i didn't know him if there was but right yeah i was i was fighting back in like 01 was my first one actually um but no man i i 
I dreamed of this. You know, this is what I had in my head that I was going to shoot for. Um, did I think it was actually going to happen? Well, probably not. Yeah, I probably didn't really think it was realistic that it was going to happen. But yeah. I also said to myself, I'm going to try to do this or, or I'm going to do this or I'm going to die trying to do this. It's going to be one or the other. And most people probably would have died trying you know if they would <laughs> probably right you know <laughs> and maybe uh you know this has led me down a lot of different potential paths but i've stayed on my path and and i'm going to continue staying on my path heck yeah matt your nickname obviously you're known as the immortal but to a lot of us like real hardcore fight fans you're like a god just from you know your your style the way that you approach the game you know one of my very good friends jordan Tatoni. He told me one time you told him something along the lines of, I don't really care if it's his or mine. I just want it to be bloody. Like just, just those sorts of things along those lines, <laughs> you know, that how, how, how do you reflect back on just the impact that you've made on the MMA community itself? I don't, to be honest, I don't even think about it, man. You know, this is one of those things I talk about all the time especially now that I'm older and I have a lot of friends my age. And I mean, how many guys do you hear talking about their, their four touchdowns in high school football or, you know, the, the belt that they got. I bring it up every show, day. Matt. Just, <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> Well, so I've made it a point of mine that I'm going to live my life focused on what I'm going to do rather than what I've done. I don't care what I've done. The past is not an indicator of my future in any sense of the word. And uh, that's my entire existence is focused on my future and getting through uh, or doing better than, um, you know, improving myself every day, I should say. Yeah. You know, I had the honor of interviewing you uh, back in 2016, Matt. It was the last interview we did on Inside MMA before the show was canceled after mm. a nine year run. So number one, congratulations on that. You should get a prize or something. I don't know. I'm gonna hit up Mark Cuban, all right? Uh, he should have the money for it, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on that, man. But what I remember from that interview was building off what you just said, that you <laughs> continue to take it one fight at a time. You really didn't have a time frame on how much longer you would continue to fight. And here we are five years later, and it seems like you are still approaching things the exact same way. Uh, is that true? And, and what does the future look like? Um, I wouldn't say the exact same way. Um, I'd say since then I have, you know, there, you can only do one fight at a time sort of so much where I have three kids, um, you know, and that's what my, my life really revolves around now. So, you know, I, um, I think back then I just had the two kids yep. and probably getting close to having the third. So, and they were, they were young back then. And as they've grown, I've just started thinking more and more, okay, you know, what am I going to do for them? I mean, we all step away from the sport at some time. No one's able to do it forever. Um, I got to have something set up for them. I, I don't want to be that guy that's you know, going bankrupt and, um, hundred percent. you know, when he retires. So, um, even though in terms of my fighting career, yes, I, I still take that one fight at a time. Um, but in terms of my life, it, uh, I, I, I take it uh, a, a lot more, a broader view of things. Mm. You, you've done something that not very many people can do at this stage of your career. When you came back from your knee injury, how did that time away, you know, really kind of help solidify like that, that mental aspect of your game and, and, you know, you just having that purpose in coming back and going on this last run. Um, you know, I don't know, man, the, the knee injury was like way smaller thing than I thought it was going to be. Everybody talks about ACLs and how big of a deal it is and, you know, take all this time off and, like, I don't know, man. I, I, I started working on some other things around that time. Like I, that's when I opened my gym. Uh, I, I use it as an opportunity being, I, I know I'm going to be out for nine months. Like let's open my gym. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it didn't really even phase me like that, man. I was just like, 
like every day focused on getting my knee a little bit better, getting a little bit stronger. And, and, but I would say that was probably when I stopped and, uh, or slowed down a little bit and started, or maybe not slow down, but stepped back a little bit and started really trying to build more holistically a life uh, that will last longer. Cause you know, in my head, I'm like, well, look, I could come back, uh, take a fight and blow my ACL again, you know, <laughs> you know, in camp. So, you know, this might turn into 18 months or 20 months, like, like Dominic Cruz or something. And so I wanted, I'd wanted to try to be prepared as best as possible. And, and, um, you know, and that's all I'm doing, you know, it's just building a lot of strategies for the future. Yeah. The immortal Matt Brown joins us on the MMA plug and Matt, it's back to work this Saturday. Uh, this time taking on a 25 fight veteran in Diego Lima, um, break down your opponent for us, Matt. Uh, you know, I'm sure this will be another fight filled with fireworks, you know, talk about him and, and do you maybe expect his game plan to be to try to get you to the ground? Well, I have no idea what his game plan is and I can't control that or change that. So it's kind of irrelevant to me, but, uh, and I, and I, I've never really seen him try to take guys down. So. Uh, if his past is is any indicator of you know what he's going to do in my fight, then I wouldn't expect that. But again, you just never know. So I want to be prepared for everything. But you know, he's a really good a technical fighter, and you know, he's good at setting his pace and kind of doing it, turning the fight into what he wants it to be. Um, so I think that's going to be the big battle. Is you know, I mean, that's every fight, right? Is who imposes their will. But I think uh, strategically, it'll be a lot of who gets to who decides the pace and the distance and timing yeah that i mean you kind of hit the nail on what my follow-up question that was going to be i was going to say that does in your case does violence trump technique uh it can not always but it definitely can um that's a that's a broad question right there <laughs> that's <laughs> that, that's a question that would take we could do an entire interview just on that question right there. We could do a whole podcast on that. Absolutely. We'll have to set that up here in the future. Now we're excited to see you back, Matt, in the octagon, you know, for the second time this year, you know, you haven't, I was looking at it and was a little shocked that you haven't had two fights in the same year. I think it was back to uh, 2016. So this is this is a great um, you know opportunity for you to be back in there and and if possible you know give us an idea of what the goals are for the year. Um, right now is win this fight obviously, and then after that, uh, you know this this is one of those I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and and kind of evaluate my whole life and and see where everything's at. Like my gym's blowing up. I got a lot of really good fighters coming up through there. Um, got a guy fighting on the contender series in September. Um, I have a girl that might be fighting uh, Clarissa Shields pretty soon. Um, I have uh, uh, three or four guys ready to turn pro and they're all just kind of waiting on me to be there to help them out, you know? <laughs> so sure. there's that. And then, you know, again, I have three kids, so they take up a lot of my time. Um, so I'll have to just evaluate and see when, everything's ready. I mean, I, I kind of, you know, I'm not a, a young kid with no responsibilities anymore. So I have to, that's why I don't fight as much as I used to. Like I have to take each fight and make sure all the pieces of my life are in place so that I can focus on that fight. And I've made the mistake before where I didn't do that. And then I have a lot of distractions going in and, and it just causes a, it's just a domino effect that causes bad things to happen. Understood. And one last question for me, Matt, you know, with, with the ultimate fighter coming back, that's where a lot of us came to know you from and the clip just kept on playing over and over and all of the, the best of clips, the, uh, the infamous tobacco clip, you know, but what, what would you say that, uh, you know, the, the ultimate fighter meant for you in your career as, as you progressed and went on? I think the ultimate fighter is awesome, man. I, mean, I think it's a great training camp sort of a primer to get people for, at least for me you know it got me used to the cameras it got me used to um being criticized mm. 
got me used to being in the spotlight, got me used to a, a high level training. It was the first time, you know, I did a full camp with no distractions at all with high level guys pushing me every day. Um, so I think it's a really good thing. Yeah. Of course, you know, it got me in the UFC too. So, you know, for others, it can be a bad thing, but, uh, for me, it worked out great. And, um, I love watching the show. I think like most of us that are you know, really into combat sports, we probably still like to see more training and more fighting and less drama, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know but we, we, you know it is what it is yeah matt we appreciate your time i have one last question before i let you go you know 16 years is is a long time and in that those 16 years you have been known to uh, blow up many of your opponents through the years uh you know i know that you're not a guy that calls guys out or anything like that but you know it, it's if you had the opportunity and could do a do-over, or if you had could call the shot, which many athletes don't get that opportunity to have one last fight against somebody, is there a, a, a fight you'd love to get a rematch or somebody that you'd like to get in the octagon one more time? Mm. Yeah, probably three of them. Uh, Cowboy, Damian Maya, and Robbie Lawler. Heck yeah. How about all three? I'll make that happen. I love it. <laughs> all right, my man. Well, listen, we appreciate it. Uh, it was great to see you back into uh, in the octagon and uh, have some fun on Saturday night. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. One of the class acts of the sport and fan favorite, Matt Brown. Time for a quick timeout. You're listening to the MMA Plug, powered by DenverSportsBetting.com on Mile High Sports Radio. We'll